welcome to Gamer TV. Coming up, Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang James Bond is licensed to thrill in From Russia With Love. Hockey action heats up the ice in NHL 06. Movie maestro Tim Burton is having a nightmare before Christmas. But first, what do you do when the dead won't stay in their graves? You call for the Raccoon City PD. That's what. To the citizens of Raccoon City. Guess what, guys? You're the winners of this year's inappropriately named and incredibly dangerous City Award. If you want that prize in zombie-infested streets or giant plague-ridden elephants. Yes, Raccoon City is up against it once more. Resident Evil Outbreak 2 follows eight citizens in their increasingly desperate attempts to get out of Dodge. The big news this time is that you're trying to save several of them at once. I don't get many visitors around here. I hear the city's in quite a state right about now. This famous franchise has at last gone online. Most of the game scenes will feature a group of three characters, each controlled by online players or by the computer. What should I do? It's an interesting system with the right analog stick used to issue terse orders. Oh, yes. Your partners can defend you in battle, support you if you're wounded, or give you items like health or big iron bars. However, these new elements are far from perfect. Characters have a tendency to be slow on the uptake. Even worse, some of them just refuse your orders outright. Let's move. It. Sorry, no. <laughs> Apart from that, the classic Resident Evil gameplay remains largely unchanged. It's still creeping in shadows, then bang, bang, bang. That said, Outbreak 2 does feature some beautiful graphics, although still not reaching the heights of Resident Evil 4. At times, the episodic nature of the story does make it seem like a greatest hits of horror. So I'll get help and come back, right? Looks like it's a race against time. Now that we've lost communications, there's nothing else we can do. In fact, there doesn't seem to be much of a story in general. Perhaps Capcom were too busy tinkering with the multiplayer. Overall, we got the impression that Outbreak 2 is something of a testing ground for future online episodes, possibly on PS3. Not a bad thing, many might say, but the constant stream of orders and menus does mean that the evil doesn't flow quite as easily as before. For its iconic style, though, we'll still give it 3 out of 5. Let's hope no one gets hurt. When you think of James Bond, you think of the gadgets, his Walther PPK, and of course, the Bond girls. But one of the most recognisable features of the series is its music. When Electronic Arts began making a video game version of 1963 Bond flick from Russia with Love, they approached the game's musical score as if they were making a Bond movie. This is very much a retro video game. It's The whole thing is 1963, so we're taking great pains to try to get a sound that approximates the way an orchestra was recorded back in the 60s. The score is very much an homage to the original Bond composer, John Barry. Christopher Lennertz has composed over 40 film scores. He was signed up to ensure the music had a suitably cinematic feel. I met Paul Gorman, the audio director, and he told me that he needed someone to come in and write a score as if I was in 1963 and I was John Barry, and someone said, you know what, you're doing the next Bond movie. Ever since I can remember, I've known what James Bond's supposed to sound like. But when you really get in and study it, there's a lot of nuances and there's a lot of uh, structural methods to how he created these scores that were, that were absolutely, you know, brilliant. I mean, it's almost like getting 
the call to do your dream project. With his score reflecting the feel of the original movie, Chris brought in the London Philharmonia. These guys don't just bring Chris's sound to life, they also know Bonds more intimately than Miss Moneypenny. The horn players are, are the same exact people who play on the Bond movies, and they know this type of material inside and out. When you put the score down in front of them, they, they just have this intuition, they just, oh, well, I know what to do here. There is a sound. To, to musicians in, in London that is very traditional. There's something about the instruments and the people and the way they play and, and just the way they've been playing traditionally for years and years and years that sounds very British. And what better way to capture that British sound than to do it in the most famous UK recording studio, Abbey Road. Besides doing some of the Bond films and you know, so many other things, the Star Wars movies, all these other wonderful, uh, wonderful scores. The room is, it's just magical, the way the floor and the way the wood works with the, with the sound, the way everything bounces off and the size of it and the way it's shaped, it, it just brings things to life. If the studio can bring things to life, then what part does the music play in the overall game experience? The whole idea is to suck people in to say, here's your one chance. You always wanted to be Sean Connery as James Bond driving the Aston Martin, and they've got his voice, they've got an unbelievable, you know, graphical representation of him. I think it would be a disservice if the music in any way took you out of that. It takes a lot of elements to make a great game. It won't fail or succeed just on the strength of its soundtrack. But whatever happens to From Russia With Love, Electronic Arts will know they couldn't have done anything more to recreate that distinct sound of 1960s James Bond. Next up, the games industry can't hide its secrets from the ever-watchful eye of the spam filter. Games publisher THQ are taking steps to bring their genre-bending space alien shooter, Destroy All Humans, to life in movies and TV shows. The game follows the exploits of a diminutive grey E.T. as he torments Hicktown humans in preparation for a coming alien invasion. THQ have enlisted an agency in L.A. to look after the property and hawk it around Hollywood Studios. Wall Street analysts have been gazing into their crystal balls to predict the outcome of the next generation console wars. The men in suits reckon the future for the PS3 and Xbox 360 will be rosy. They estimate 200 million next-gen consoles will be sold globally. They predict Sony will maintain their place as the number one selling console manufacturer. However, they also reckon Microsoft will gain ground on their arch rivals, with the Xbox 360 accounting for 29% of the gaming market. It's bad news for Nintendo, though, with a prediction of a continuing decline in sales of their home consoles. Comics giant Marvel have famously fallen out with software developers NCSoft over their superhero game City of Heroes. Marvel even have an ongoing court case with the developer, centering around claims that players in the online game have breached Marvel copyright by creating characters which are similar to some of the comic giant's own superheroes. Now it seems Marvel want a slice of the online role-playing pie. They've teamed up with Microsoft to create a new massively multiplayer online game for their Xbox 360. Marvel's 40 years in the comic business has given them over 5,000 characters to exploit with heroes like the Hulk, Spider-Man and of course the X-Men at the top of every fanboy's wish list. We'll have to wait a while though before Marvel's characters hit consoles. The release isn't due until 2008. games arriving about as frequently as the Indian monsoon, fans are gradually learning to demand more from each edition than a fresh set of stats. This year's offering, NHL 06, will be upon us soon enough, and it seems like it will be offering some new practical features. For a start, the skill stick feature, first seen in Electronic Arts Madden football series, has now crossed over the sporting divide. 
With a simple tap of the right analog stick, you'll be able to twirl on the ice or pull off the signature goals of famous players. Player creation itself will be beefed up too, and you'll be able to add black eyes and scars to your latest team member. Improvements in physics make up the rest of the changes. EA claims to have tinkered with the movement of both the puck and the player over the ice. Obviously, we can't make a judgment at the preview stage, but everything seems nippy enough so far. No edition of NHL would be complete without a certain amount of rule breaking, and we're happy to note that fouls, punishments, and simple scrapping will all be included. We don't remember the fighting being quite this intense, though. While ice hockey itself remains a love it or leave it concern, this franchise seems to get more realistic as time goes on. While next generation editions will probably feature a find in a parking spot mode and a popcorn stand, we'll deal with this model when the game comes out later in the year. Still to come, movie mogul Tim Burton trades in his camera for a console. It's good. It's a dog's life in Japanese role player Akami. And try a subtle and understated method of problem solving in Gungrave Overdose. That's all after the break. <laughs> eBay sponsors gadgets and gaming. Fresh Prince Double Bill, tonight at 8 on Bravo. Well, injury lawyers for you, for you. If I have an accident and you get me 100% of the compensation, what do you get out of it? Do you do it for the warm feeling inside? Where's the catch? Well, I replied, we get paid by the person responsible, the one who's compensating you. Oh, I didn't know that, he grumbled. You only had to ask, I said. Call Injury Lawyers for you now on 0845 345 4444 for free, honest, professional advice and assistance on your personal injury claim. Somebody needs Energizer. For a battery that lasts up to seven times longer in digital cameras, Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery. <laughs> That's right. With Telly 2, you can now call landlines free all weekend, every weekend. Sign up for Telly 2 Standard and get free weekend calls. There's no need to pay a setup or monthly fee. And you keep your phone, BT line and number. Call 0800 027 8080 to sign up today. Telly 2. Why pay more? Hello. Mortgage news just in. Howard. Halifax is offering special rates and is also the UK's number one choice for mortgages. Woo! Splashing. But how can people find out if they could save money on their mortgage? <laughs> By calling 0800 328 6789 for free. So, to find out if you could save money, simply call 0800 328 6789. Uh, what's the news? That's my line. Is debt destroying your life? For me, it got so bad I couldn't afford my monthly repayments. I even put my home at risk. If you owe more than £15,000 to three or more lenders and you or your partner have a full-time job, there could be a solution to your debt problems. I called Debt Free Direct. They've helped thousands of people turn their lives around. Debt Free Direct understood exactly what I was going through and their advice was completely confidential and free of charge. They are experts in finding the right solution if you have serious debt problems. Please remember, only call if you have debts over £15,000 and you or your partner have a full-time job. 
Simply call Debt Free Direct now on 0800 043 9999. That's 0800 043 9999. It could change your life. If you think you were missold your endowment policy, then call Claim for Endowment now because you could be entitled to compensation. Thousands of homeowners are finding their endowment mortgage doesn't cover the original loan amount. So if you're facing a shortfall, speak to us because we could win you compensation if your own endowment policy was missold. We're experts at winning endowment claims for people like Mr. and Mrs. Vince. With our help, they won over £6,700 compensation. Mr. Draper Harding was missold his endowment, and now we've helped him win over £4,000 back. And Mr. and Mrs. Bartlett, they won over £7,200 compensation, money which has really helped them. Claim for Endowment is a free helpline, and the good news is our endowment claim service is on a no-win, no-fee basis. Remember, there may be a time limit on making your claim, so call now or apply online, because we can help you win compensation. Call 0800-881-8372 for free advice about making your endowment mortgage claim. Call now. eBay. Sponsors gadgets and gaming. Welcome back to Gamer TV. Next up, a coffin which doubles as a carbine. It can only be our review of Gungrave Overdose. How can a game featuring a dead assassin with a coffin strapped to his back and a character called Rocket Billy Red Cadillac be anything but brilliant? Not only is it unfair, but it also breaks several laws of nature and our hearts too. Gungrave Overdose, based on the Japanese anime, is stupidly fast, colossally violent and definitely loud. All fine qualities for a shoot-em-up. Trouble is, within 20 minutes of picking up the controller, you'll be thoroughly bored of senseless violence. That must be where the overdose of the title comes in. What? What's going on down there? Gungrave's developers have gone on record saying the game is relentless, and that's putting it somewhat mildly. It's a weird day in gaming when you're praying for boss battles just to break up the long, long minutes of slaying foot soldiers. There is a lot that's original, though. Main character, Grave, can use his coffin as an offensive weapon, but it also comes in handy as a shield and a method of deflecting rockets back to the enemy who fired them. Special moves are earned by performing a certain amount of ordinary kills, and it has to be said, they're both entertaining and devastating. Sadly, none of these features can make up for the game's fundamental lack of variety. If you throw in some suspect animation and an occasionally wonky camera, you've got a shooter that might be worth a rental, but certainly not a purchase. We'll give it two out of five. Carnage done well is very commendable. It's just that sooner or later you'll want to do, well, something else. For all those people out there that insist video games are just mindless entertainment, Here's a title that looks set to make them reconsider. Capcom's forthcoming Akami stood out as the most alluringly beautiful PS2 title on show at this year's E3 Expo. It should come as no surprise to those who've experienced the comic book brilliance of the beautiful Joe games that this stylish piece of cell shading is also the work of Clover Studios. Rather than revisiting their stunted superhero's kung fu antics, here you'll get to play the part of Amaterasu, a mythical sun goddess. No doubt you're thinking, that looks more like an albino German shepherd than a heavenly being. <laughs> That's because you'll actually see the deity in her earthly form, a big white wolf. 
She's been summoned to Earth to deal with an invasion of supernatural monsters who are sucking the life from the land, leaving behind a dull grey world. As Amaterasu travels around, defeating demons and gaining the faith of the locals, she'll restore her surroundings to their natural, colourful state. Her main godly power will be the Celestial Brush. When in use, the action will pause and the screen becomes a flat piece of parchment waiting for your brush strokes. When play resumes, the marks you've left will affect the world in some way. Akami's distinctive visuals have been inspired by traditional Japanese painting. And from what we've seen, this has the makings of a masterpiece. We'll find out when the game launches next year. Trust me. Film licensed games can be disappointing, generally taking the form of a standard game style with movie licensing thrown lazily on top. Why do you do that? It makes you wonder what the film's directors do to make sure their creations are treated properly when they cross over from the big screen to the TV screen. Keep your eyes open. To find out just how involved they can get, we track down A-list movie maker Tim Burton to the UK's world-famous Pinewood Film Studios. Hi, hey. Hello. As one of the industry's top dogs, his pictures to date have raked in over $976 million at the box office. He took some time out from filming Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to see how work was progressing on the game of his dark fairy tale, The Nightmare Before Christmas. The stop-motion animated musical follows the story of the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, Jack Skellington, who after a visit to Christmas Town, decides to kidnap Santa. Put me down this instant! And bring the Yuletide festivities back home to his ghoulish subjects. Merry Christmas! Carrying the latest build of their game, the development team from Capcom have flown in especially from Japan. Come on! Well, well, well! Jack the Pumpkin Kid! Will Tim like what he sees or demand that they scrap everything and go back to the drawing board? With so much of their hard work at stake, the team are understandably nervous. The music is a vital aspect of the film, so one of the first things they decide to show Tim is a musical boss battle. This time you've gone too far. In-game musical numbers have been adapted directly from the movie, with Danny Elfman lending his vocal talents. But I can say you'll rule this town only in your dreams. Now that is a poker face. This guy's giving nothing away. That's nice. <laughs> Result. Tim is suitably impressed with the way his tunes have been handled. A collective sigh of relief can be sensed from the Capcom team. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's good. Because it goes. They've passed their first test, but will he like the action sequences? Jack Skellington's weapon of choice is the Soul Robber. An elastic whip seems to be made from radioactive green stuff. Another nod of approval from Tim. So far, so good. They really have expanded on it and yeah. still kept the spirit on it. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Really nice. Next, Tim's attention is turned to renders of the concept art for some of Jack's in-game costumes. Basically, these costumes are in lock. So that's okay. the Fred Astaire one. That's the Fred Astaire. Mm -hmm. yeah. There could be a problem here. The Capcom staff look on apprehensively as Tim grabs a sketchbook. Yeah. But, you know, it's something that I didn't mm -hmm. really like about... Uh, you mean for four right? right? Uh, I mean, I don't know, if, if, does, it, does that make it too... But actually, if you just took these, <laughs> no, if you just took this and put just the stripes... Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. red stripes. Red stripes. Look, like, like to play red stripes. Luckily, they reckon that the required changes can be applied without too much programming grief. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Byrne is so satisfied with Capcom's work, he offers the team a golden ticket of an opportunity to tour the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film set. Well, um, you know, if you guys want while you're here, um, yeah, we don't have...
have much finished stuff, but you can uh, take a look. Of course, with our cameras in tow, we weren't allowed to join them and were unceremoniously ejected from the premises. In gaming, there's something satisfying about peeking through a telescopic sight then firing lumps of hot lead over great distances. So it's a bit strange that there haven't been many games devoted entirely to the elimination of long-range targets. Ubisoft's forthcoming shooter, Sniper Elite, aims to put that right. Developed by the UK-based outfit Rebellion, whose previous work has included the 2000 AD licensed Rogue Trooper and Dread vs. Death games, Sniper Elite will take you back to World War II's battlefield. The main character is an American sharpshooter on a mission behind enemy lines. The end of the war is nearing. Dropped into Berlin, you're sensibly disguised as a German soldier. Our marksman has to use his skills to stop the Nazis' atomic weapon technology from falling into the hands of the advancing Soviet army. The game will use a combination of third and first person perspectives as the sniper uses his specialist training to stealthily find the best vantage point and then switch to the scope view to deliver his deadly shots. When taking aim, players will have to take into consideration the effects of gravity and wind on the bullet's path, as well as his heart rate, breathing and posture. Details like this promise to make the game's sniping mechanics ultra realistic. Multiplayer options include cooperative and head-to-head -head modes, with offline and online play by up to eight assassins. So far, so good. We've trained our scopes on Sniper Elite's progress and we'll have it squarely in our crosshairs for a review before the game's September release. Well, that's gotta hurt. Well, we're out of ammo, but join us next time for more Gamer TV.